Oh, hi, Ogazimas. Breathe. And normally I say crush and sniff, but I've got herbs today that are already crushed. Or essentially, you know, I've got some beautiful um, lavender in this lavender sachet that I got at the Sudley Castle gift shop. And oh, lavender, as we learned from Hannah, I don't know how many episodes ago, is a relaxant, yes, but it is also a little bit of a stimulant. You know, it has both of those qualities to it. And actually, once I learned that, I liked it a little better because I thought that it was just supposed to be this relaxing thing. And, um, and I didn't feel relaxed when I smelled it. It kind of, it kind of had a little bit of a tang to it. And, and it turns out that tang is, is the, is the spark where you can, and this is exactly what you need for work. What I need for work is relaxing, but also staying alert. So lavender is a, I just keep doing it because I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I'm way behind on writing a paper, finishing a paper. I'm not behind on writing it. I'm behind on finishing it. And, um, and I was, you know, distracted this week because I was at a, at a dig. An archaeological dig at Sudley Castle, which is on the edge of the Cotswolds, not far from Wales, apparently. So a lot of the people that you meet there came uh, came from Wales, are Welsh. So it was just, it was so exciting. And there's so much similarity between obviously doing an archaeological dig and doing what I do, which is a sort of literary archaeology and, and getting original manuscripts and figuring out not only what they are and what they say, but also uh, where they fit into the context of the bigger story. Who is this person? Who are they writing to? Why are they writing to them? How is the person going to receive it? Did they receive it? Um, and, you know, hoping the paper stays intact and all that kind of stuff. So I, I got to meet this fantastic archivist who's a, a retired history teacher, Derek, Ma Derek Maddock, who gave us all kinds of in interesting things about Sudley Castle because what we're looking for is possibly a garden. They call it the last Tudor garden built for Queen Elizabeth by Charles Bridges, who lived in Sudley Castle in 1592 and was trying to impress her, like so many before him, who had built gardens, like the Great Gardens at Kettleworth, built by her favorite Robert Dudley. Of course, he was dead by 1592. And Eltham in 1591 had a big entertainment in a garden for her. Christopher Hatton built a huge garden for Queen Elizabeth up in Northamptonshire. Beautiful banqueting house, all this stuff. She never came. So uh, there's all these gardens around England that were built for the queen. And sometimes she came, sometimes she didn't come. She, she met, she walked, she watched performances. And if she enjoyed herself, the person who threw the party got lots of uh, wealth and political appointments and all kinds of perks for doing something that she enjoyed. But I also loved going up in the archive because here's the thing about Sudley Castle. So many connections to Shakespeare. First of all, Henry VIII. So there was a Henry VIII play. Catherine Parr, his last wife, lived there. And with Thomas Seymour, who she married right after uh, Henry died. And so Elizabeth came there. Uh, she was her stepmother. Elizabeth gave her these beautiful translated with embroidered covered books. And she was a great writer herself. The Spice of Wisdom. So that's Catherine Parr's prayers. Um, but there's more. It's, and she actually reigned. A lot of people don't know this. When Henry went off to... Um, to fight in France, his sort of last battle, proving his masculinity and that he was still up for it, uh, she was made um, regent of the country. So there's something that a lot of people don't focus on, but I think it's getting more focused now. Also, Lady Jane Grey was one of her ladies-in-waiting, so there's that. Um, and she's buried there. They found her remnants, a lot of dust, and a tooth. I saw a tooth um, with... Um, and they rebuilt a Victorian monument to her, which I'll post. And Richard III was there. Part of his banqueting house is there. So another Shakespeare connection. 
so many Shakespeare connections, really fantastic. And then digging away and finding a wall and it's very hands-on and my hand does hurt. Every muscle in your body gets worked out. They were talking about um, how digging is very much core work and certainly when you're picking up the loose, I learned so many ter so much terminology, picking up your loose, which is all the 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 dirt that you've dug up that you don't need, um, and putting it in the spoil pile, that really gets your back and your stomach and then and then the and your shoulders and your legs, everything. But anyway, all this is is a lead up to muscle pain joint pain and all of that kind of stuff but I do want to I do want to say what the line of the day is and I wanted it to be having to do with digging and the dig and so I went to Imogen in Cymbeline and this is too long but I'm gonna I'm gonna t read it to you anyway as deep as these poor pickaxes can dig so you could stop there, as deep as these poor pickaxes can dig. And you could make that about your fingers or getting out the salad. I love when people use Shakespeare lines for really random but but appropriate <laughs> situations. Like I always say, let the sky rain potatoes from, from Falstaff's line from Merry Wives of Windsor when it's dinner time. You know, it's much more interesting than come to the table. Anyway, as... As deep as these poor pickaxes can dig. And when with wild wood leaves and weeds, I have strewed his grave, a lot of W's in there, and on it set a century of prayers, such as I can, twice o'er, I'll weep and sigh. I just love that, a century of prayers, two times, uh, he says, uh, uh, she says, Imogen. And... But what I decided on, after all that, is a line that comes right after it from, by Caius Lucius. Be cheerful, wipe thine eyes. Some falls are means the happier to arise. So it means when things go wrong or things go badly or you fall, and I liked the play on the fact that it is fall or autumn, um, good things come out of it. And that was certainly true of my week. I was so excited about something that was supposed to happen on Friday, and it didn't, so I stayed at Sudley, and something amazing happened, which unfortunately I can't tell you about yet, but I will. But let's bring Hannah on. Hannah's like, where are you? Come on, clock is ticking. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Good afternoon. Oh, you. <laughs> what um, what are you in front of? Where are you? That's my tincture cabinet. So these are all of my these are all of my herbal tinctures. So this is what I this is what I dispense from. Oh um, my gosh. So liters and liters of um well hundreds of different herbal extracts in alcohol water extract form. Oh, how fascinating. I was talking, it hasn't, we haven't aired yet, it's going to be our Halloween uh, show, but I was talking about how many times Shakespeare says distilled, you know, and so are they distilled, what you have there? Some are distilled, some are percolated, <laughs> some are infused, so, so yeah, so, yeah. Distillation oh my God, that's amazing. Well, as I have said before, Queen Elizabeth... <laughs> had a tincture cabinet of her own. She was a mad herbalist. She loved all of that stuff. So so you very kindly listened to me and, and agreed. And I said, Hannah, what what uh what what are the plants for pain in the muscles and joints? So what are what are Shakespeare's plants for pain in the muscles and joints? Although I'm much better today, I have to say. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a few, actually, as it turns out, which I didn't realise. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the first things I thought of, because I remember it being in the book, um, was mustard. Mm -hmm. And mustard isn't something that we really use an awful lot now in modern day herbal practice, but it's still got quite a lot of good uses. So, you know, some people might remember um, these things called mustard plasters that they're, maybe their, their parents or their grandparents used to talk about. My mother had a song. My mother had a song about taking the mustard plaster off her chest. Okay, so that that there's, there's truth in that. So mustard is is hot and it's pungent, isn't it? So you know when you when you have a, a you know a bit of mustard on some food, it kind of whew, it kind of 
it's it's got an interesting kind of quite wild taste but it's really really warming as well and mm -hmm. one of the things that it does because it's so pungent is it's really good at kind of getting through the skin to where it needs to get to so people used to make mustard what are called mustard plasters to put on the chest to help to clear phlegm and in cases of bronchitis and it was it was kind of part of the home kind of medicine cabinet really Hmm. But the thing that it also used to be used for um, was for, for aching joints and kind of rheumatic joints. Hmm. And what you can do with it is if you have some mustard seed, um, you can in well you can put some some gently gently heat some oil with some mustard seed in it and then infuse it for about sort of half an hour or so, half an hour to an hour on a very very low heat. And okay. then you've got some nice mustard oil um, that you can then rub on um, aching joints to heat them up and oh, bring wow. them into the area. But I actually would do have a big thing of mustard seed at home, but it's in New York. It's not here. I put it in this dish called kedgeri. Do you know what kedgeri mm. is? Yeah. yeah. So Americans don't really know kedgeri or have kedgeri, um, oh. but I made it for uh, the Shakespeare retreat. And... Um, and you had to have mustard seed, and it made this fantastic. It's mostly rice, and it, it makes this fantastic little pop in your mouth mm. when you're adding the flavor. But I love the idea. So could we just go and get, um, you know, the gray poupon out of the out of the um, refrigerator and do, use that, or does it really need to be an infusion of oil? Ideally, an, an ideally an, an oil infusion, and then what you would need to do is go very, very, very carefully because it is so pungent and it's so strong. It might be too much for some people, so you, you would need to do like a little patch test just to make sure you weren't going to have a reaction to it. Um, okay. But it's um, yeah, it's good potent stuff for for getting heat and um, heat and warmth to very cold aching joints. I can imagine. Okay, mustard oil for your aching joints. What else? Well, I mean, that, that's kind of some things that you might not think about as well, which are, you know, you, you can buy them in um, essential oil forms. So, um, so rosemary and um, peppermint, for example. So, uh -huh. an, an, an essential oil is just a type of extract. Um, that, that you know that can be extracted from a plant um you do if you know if if an essential oil is an essential oil is an essential oil um you know if you've got <laughs> organic versus non-organic fair enough but you no know, i'm going to be controversial and say a lot of the multi-level marketing stuff is total hype um yeah. you know they're not really any more special than the next one so yeah, yeah. so um the, with rosemary again, it's warming and it's stimulating and it's heating. So if you're using a little few drops of um, rosemary essential oil in a carrier oil, and then you know you can rub that on aching joints. And similarly with peppermint oil, um, peppermint has an action of kind of being slightly analgesic and pain killing by having a kind of weird kind of cooling action so you'll see that in a lot of very conventional joint and muscle rubs and that's right. why so when you say carrier could you just clarify what carrier oil means yeah so a carrier oil it's um it's an aromatherapy term so it basically means it's um it's an an oil that you put essential oils into so a carrier oil can be any kind of oil like it could be um could be olive oil it could be sweet almond oil mm. any oil that, that can, you can mix an essential oil into and then mix it in with it to dilute the essential oil because essential oils are highly highly strong <laughs> basically they're just really really yeah. strong just so you have to kind of dilute them down and you shouldn't put them directly on the skin or drink well what what would be like no don't use this as a carrier oil what would what would be a a bad choice for a carrier oil like canola i mean canola is not as good for people as everyone seems to think that's a big misnomer but um yeah i mean it, it wants to be something where you may be going to get a little benefit a little bit yes. of benefit so something like vegetable oil would probably smell a bit mm, you know but yeah. you know sunflower oil great olive oil great you know just just a nice sensible kitchen oil would be would be fine okay great okay so that's Rosemary, peppermint, 
mustard. I'm liking the mustard so far. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, there's there's two of this as well. So there's the there's the white willow tree. So mm. this isn't this isn't really something you can make yourself. It's something that you'll need to purchase. Um, but it's something that we do use quite a lot as herbless. Um, oh, let me see if I can grab a. Hang on. Might have some. Yeah, I do. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah. so oh my gosh. So the um so willow bark um is what's used and it's um it's willow contains a lot of what what are called salicylates and mm -hmm. salicylates basically form the basis for aspirin. So this yeah. has an aspirin like action, but without the damaging effects on the on the stomach lining. Um what does aspirin do to the stomach lining? Why is it a problem? It, it's 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 quite if long term it's it's quite damaging for the stomach lining it can it can kind of really quite damage the stomach lining quite badly so that's why people will often take drug or be prescribed drugs like um like the protein pump inhibitor ppi drugs um like amethyl mm. and all the zol drugs to counterbalance the stomach lining um damage so you get a lot of this situation where you you take one drug and there's a side effect so then you have to take another drug to to undo the side effect and often that has a side effect so you know it's this knock on effect where i mean does willow bark have a side effect <laughs> I know oh, it an aspirin it, in the it's first one where really you know you you only really want to be taking it if you're seeing a herbalist um because okay. it, it's very very potent it, it's you know, if, you, if you have pre-existing health conditions if you're taking any other medication it's one where you would definitely need to consult a herbalist first but it, it's um it we use it a lot and it works really really well um and then the other one that we use a lot of as well which um which also has salicylates in but but less of is um birch oh. so usually usually silver birch so betula, mm -hmm. and um birch has always kind of traditionally been used for um you know for gout and for kind of rheumatic complaints mm -hmm. um so with birch birch is quite you know, but it's quite trendy nowadays. So it's, it's beautiful. You know, I mean, you go into a supermarket and you can buy birch water, and it's oh, that's you know, right. I got birch. Um, yeah. I got a birch syrup for pancakes and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's something that that you can buy, but the actual um, but the actual birch leaf itself, rather than the um, rather than the tap's juice. Um, well, it's tap sap, I should say. Um, the birch leaf is something that can be made into a tea um, <laughs> to help with um, aching joints and rheumatism and gout as part of a wider thing. Because, you know, if you've got gout, you've got gout for a generally a reason. Can, can you explain? Because gout sounds to me like such an old fashioned disease i know nixon had it american president nixon and my brother has it and so he can't have oysters but what exactly is gout it's um it's uric acid deposits um yeah. usually in the usually in the peripheries the hands and the feet but usually the feet and it's really really painful um yeah. And you know, quite a lot of the um, the ways to solve it are are dietary based, really. Um, and you know, there's there's an, one thing that does work particularly well for gout, and in, in particular, is um, bitter cherry juice. Oh, okay, tart cherry, we call it. Ah, well, I'm going to send my brother a, a tankard of that then. Quite um, a lot, but <laughs> that's also a Shakespeare, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, so, so we want to put uh, a mustard oil on our sore muscles and joints, which is it better? Or does it do both? And, um, and what was the rosemary and what was the one with rosemary rosemary, rosemary and peppermint essential oil <laughs> providing their inner oil and then okay. you can remove the difference okay um, if only i had brought all that stuff with me when i was digging that would have been the smart thing to do and i just want to say something quickly about the birch um i didn't 
I guess they are trendy right now because I have seen them in a lot of syrups and, and ingredients. But they're also, silver birch especially is a fast-growing tree. If you want to get it in your garden, it was known for being in Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood's forest. But I love that it's a fast-growing tree. They're so beautiful. They're especially pretty in the rain. And I always wanted like a little plot of, of ground where I could put um, a white birch, a silver birch, and there's one that looks kind of goldy. And I just thought in the rain it would just look like a, a sparkling fairy forest or something so maybe i'll get my wish if what i what i can't tell you yet comes true <laughs> but anyway okay so crush and sniff and then you can get all of these wonderful things and a carrier oil i like sweet almond oil because it smells good and also almonds are in shakespeare there's only one and olive oil of course and um it's so nice to see you again hannah you. It was cool. <laughs> And I've never seen your tincture cabinet, so this is very exciting. <laughs> okay, so be cheerful. Wipe thine eyes. Some falls are means the happier to arise.